industry? Well, um, my, uh, in, in, in America, I started practicing as a pharmacist mm -hmm. in 2000, uh, uh, in 2011. Okay. 2011, that's when I started practicing pharmacy. Mm -hmm. But my involvement with medications uh, started way long in Kenya. Mm -hmm. I'm a graduate of Nairobi University, Chiromo, and I did pharmaceutical sales. That's where the vision of being involved in healthcare and especially dealing with medications came from. Mm -hmm. So then if you consider that, then you're going all the way back from 1996, mm -hmm. but in America from 2011. Uh, 2011, I started working uh, for a company called CVS and I worked there for uh, eight years and then I decided to dive into business and that's what I'm doing here right now. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this business and it's not just a business, this is a vision to help people, especially in Houston. We are a non-profit pharmacy uh, aiming at helping people with low income who cannot afford medication and especially in the area of diseases like diabetes. We are okay. our specialty pharmacy, we are like we are not a specialty diabetes, diabetes pharmacy, mm -hmm. but we offer a lot of help to patients who have diabetes. Thank you so much. There are many Kenyans uh, who have a vision and a dream. I want you to speak to a young man or a young woman somewhere who is aspiring to be a pharmacist. Can you please um, guide us, guide him or her on how to be a pharmacist and the advantages of being a pharmacist? Well, to become a pharmacist, first of all, you have to have the desire. Uh, if you have the desire to serve people in the field of pharmacy, then of course that's the beginning. Uh, after having the desire, then you have to follow through by uh, 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 doing courses. Let's say if you are in, in high school or even in primary school, you have to strive uh, and make sure that you're good in sciences. You will need mathematics, you'll need chemistry, you'll need biology. You, have, you need to have all those foundational courses. And then after that, of course, you have to aim at doing well to be able to be admitted to the uh, Department of Pharmacy. And it depends on country to country, okay. but basically almost the same. Uh, beautiful. How is the market, um, the job market um, uh, a vision or maybe the outlook? Well, uh, pharmacy is a very uh, evolving field. Um, uh, uh, I would say uh, the market is very diverse. Okay. You can choose to become a, 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 a pharmacist, who we call the retail pharmacist, like me. I'm a retail pharmacist. Uh, you can choose to become a clinical pharmacist. Uh, clinical is actually a little bit deceiving word. You can be clinical even in the retail pharmacy, mm -hmm. but a clinical hospital pharmacist you can decide to go to the industry. There are people who work as pharmacists in the industry. There are some people also who work as pharmacists in medical insurance companies, and those are the people who deal with prior authorization. So pharmacy is very diverse, it's, it's huge, uh, but you have to know what you want from it. And thank you so much. Maybe uh, still in that area, um, there are people who would wish to know, by the way, what does a pharmacist do? Well, <laughs> ah, that's a good question. Yeah, uh, traditionally, a pharmacist uh, is known to be a dispenser. That's okay. traditionally. Uh, a brick and mortar building like this one, whereby there is a person with a white coat who is a pharmacist and his work is to receive prescriptions, interpret the prescriptions, and then be able to dispense. And dispensing means you're able to interpret and, and, and come up with a uh, a, a consumable form of medication and information that the patient can utilize to take the medication. Mm -hmm. That's the traditional way. Uh, okay, there is another a group of pharmacists who work in the, in the hospital and their work is a little bit different. They, uh, they, 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 they fulfill or rather they work hand in hand with the doctors to be able to, 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 to come up with the dosages and uh, which have to be administered to the patient mm -hmm. that's in the hospital level there are other pharmacists and uh, now it's non-traditional that people don't know that sit down in a in an office in an insurance company doing prior authorization there are other pharmacists who work in manufacturing of medication pharmacy is a big big field thank you so so much yes. uh we are together with uh, dr kefa wainaina dr kefa wainaina was born was not born here in the United States and he didn't just have jumped from the village to become a doctor or a pharmacist he has gone through a journey 
when we come back before we start off with our uh, topic tonight uh, Dr. Wainaina is going to give us a history of who Dr. Kefa Wainaina is we'll be back shortly sure thank you all right we are back thank you so much together with us on this very special program this is actually the beginning of America 101 a series of programs where we will feature different Kenyans who are doing extraordinary things here in the US and also back in Kenya together with us is Dr. Kefa Wainaina Dr. Kefa Wainaina is the director and the founder of um, RX Assist Pharmacy here in the United States, actually in Houston, Texas, and also he's the director and the founder of Caremax Health Limited back in Kenya, Pale Juja City Mall, and also the Gateway Mall. You knew cool as you came out. Exactly. And also the very new one that is in Kiambu Road. We'll give you the details about that shortly. But before then, let's know who Dr. Kefa Wainaina is. Well, thank you so much again, as usual, uh, Captain Joroge Jerry. Well, uh, Kefa Wainaina, that is me, I was born in Kenya, in actually in Thika, uh, in Thika Hospital. Oh, beautiful. Thika Hospital. And then uh, in my early childhood, I was raised uh, partially in Embu. My mother is from Embu. My dad is from Muranga. So I'm a Muranga guy. And uh, for a few years, I was raised in Embu. Then we relocated to Garissa, northeastern province. Oh. That's a story that many people don't know unless mm -hmm. you're close to me. So I grew up in Garissa. Uh, the most feared place, but it's, I can tell you it's a beautiful place. Yeah. And I graduated from primary school in Garissa mm -hmm. Primary. I attended Garissa High School. That's amazing. Went to Garissa wow. High School. That's awesome. And, uh, yeah, yeah. So I'm a graduate of Garissa High School. I'm very proud of, of that. Mm -hmm. And then I um, joined Nairobi University, uh, Chiromo Campus, or and, and that was, but I don't want to mention the years. <laughs> <laughs> so from Garissa, direct yes. to Chiromo Campus, Nairobi University. Exactly. From Garissa to Nairobi University, Chiromo Campus. Oh, wow. Exactly. And then in, in, in Garissa, I mean, sorry, in, in Chiromo, I graduated with a Bachelor of Science in Biochemistry. Mm -hmm. And I had dreams and hopes that one day I'll become a pharmacist. And, and it's worthwhile to mention too, if we can go back again to Garissa. Uh, you know, sometimes it's good for people to know exactly who somebody is. Mm -hmm. I was raised by parents who were selling in the market. My parents were not employed. They were selling vegetables in the market. In Garissa? In no? Garissa. Okay. And, and, and I used to help them so much. I used to, every time I went, I mean, uh, I have one brother and two sisters. And our lifestyle was very interesting. In the morning, we used to pass through the market carrying some stuff to help our parents, drop them in the market, and then go to school. And then after school, when kids, most of them are going to the library or going home to play, we walked to the market and started selling. And that's where I learned my skills of sales. Uh, of sales. I'm a pharmacist first, but secondly, I'm a salesperson. This is very, very yeah. good. That means those people who have the stereotypical thinking of uh, our towns this is Wainaina his parents were doing business selling a uh, local eh? exactly. in Garissa and as Wainaina born in Thika uh, he get he got to get the best in Garissa high school uh, that took him to Nairobi University Chiromo campus sure that is sure. awesome sure Garissa must be a, a good place actually Garissa is such a good place and and it's like my life was well all aligned if honestly if we did not go to Garissa I would not be in America mm -hmm. that's one thing I would not be in America because I remember it is in Garissa because I was involved in in church from when I was a young child that I met some Christians some brothers mm -hmm. who motivated me first of all to become a Christians to become a Christian sorry and then after I grew up one of the brother in the church um, 
relocated to America and he became a bishop. And actually, it's worth mentioning that guy because he really uh, 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 had a big role in my life. He was he's the late Bishop Kabachia. And then after I graduated from Nairobi University, he's the one who motivated me to come to America. Amen. So it's all something connected. So to me, Garissa is, is a very special place. There is not any other city I respect like Garissa. Thank you so, so yeah. much. That is a big and a huge motivation. Now, let me ask you, after you went to, Chi to uh, Nairobi University Chiromo campus, yes. you did your pharmacy. No, I did my biochemistry. I did biochemistry. Science, Bachelor of Science in Biochemistry and uh -huh. Chemistry. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> and then after that? So after that, I got a job with a pharmaceutical company. Back so, in Kenya? Exactly. So in Kenya for five years, from 1997 to 2001, I was working as a pharmaceutical sales representative. And what that entails, of course, is almost related to what I'm doing today. Yes. That's, where, that's how I learned medications and interacted with the doctors as I marketed my products in Kenya. And actually, I did well. I did well. I, before I came to America, I worked for a company that was based in Dubai. And I, I will never forget the day uh, we traveled to Dubai. And that's how my eyes were open. That mm -hmm. There is somewhere outside there where you can do something, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Like I told you, this is the Trumpet of Hope. If you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do so, so that you'll know and you'll be the first one to get other programs that we do. With us is Dr. Kefa Wainaina. He is the proprietor and the director of Akia Max Limited back in Kenya. And here in the U.S., we have RX Assist. Assist Pharmacy. Pharmacy. Yes. Yeah. This is awesome. Now, Dr. you are so dear to, uh, you, you're so close to the issues of um, uh, diabetes. And I want you to take us through um, uh, just a brief lesson, just brief, like an introduction yes. to <clears throat> diabetes. Okay. Well, uh, diabetes is, uh, I want to use the easiest terms, it's a metabolic disease, or rather, it's a, yeah, it's a metabolic disease, and uh, it is characterized by high blood glucose in, the, in, in your system. So, the body has the amount of glucose that you should have okay. at every time. Once you eat food, uh, especially the carbohydrates, are converted into glucose, which is sugar. Sugar is very good. That's what the cells use for, for, for to make the, 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 the to, for energy production. But in diabetes, uh, the sugar is not utilized by the cells for some reason. And for that reason, you end up with elevated blood sugar. That's diabetes. And diabetes, there are two types of diabetes. And uh, there is juvenile or uh, insulin dependent diabetes mellitus and there is non-insulin dependent diabetes mellitus. So insulin dependent means uh, it's the diabetes that occurs because you don't have insulin. If you don't have insulin, you don't have the key that opens your cell for the sugar to get in. So the sugar remains floating around the cells. We need the sugar to get into the cells to be utilized. Mm -hmm. So in first, uh, type 1 diabetes, you don't have insulin. Insulin is the, is, the, is, the, is, the, is the substance that the body uses as a key to open the cells so that the sugar can get in. So that one is called type 1 diabetes. It depends on insulin. Okay. Now, type 2 diabetes is the opposite of type 1 diabetes. It's non-insulin dependent diabetes mellitus. Meaning that you may be having the insulin, but your body is not able to either recognize or to utilize that insulin. And, and, and that is basically the difference. So the, the type two diabetes occurs mainly in late stages in life. So somebody has been living a normal life, has never had diabetes issue, and then all of a sudden, he is getting high blood sugar in the body, in the blood, sorry, high blood sugar. And that is the, the reason is, something has changed either they may not be producing enough insulin or at the same time they may be producing insulin but their cells are not sensitive to insulin and that is i'm just trying to make it as simple as possible 
So in comparison to type 1 diabetes, where in, 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 in type 1 diabetes, as I mentioned, there is absolute deficiency of insulin. In type 2 deficiency, meaning that you don't have insulin, and so you will need insulin to be administered to you. In type 2, you may be having the insulin, but your body is not utilizing it properly, or it's not sensitive. Your cells are not sensitive to insulin. That could be a, a generalized way to, to describe it. Yes. Uh, thank you. I mentioned a little bit about the, uh, uh, how do I know that I have diabetes? Well, well, that's a very good question. Uh, to, uh, there are some key things, changes in your body that can make you know that you, you have diabetes. If, number one, you start experiencing a lot of thirst. A lot of thirst and then also if you start experiencing a lot of urination you know you're going frequently to the bathroom you're very thirsty all the time regardless of the fact that you're eating you can't you, you, you start feeling so hungry you eat but you're feeling hungry and also uh, unexplained loss of weight and this is very simple because you need your energy in the cell you need the sugar inside the cell to provide you uh, with the with the energy and also for growth I mean sorry for yeah but if you are not having uh, enough insulin for that matter like in type 1 diabetes you are not able to process your your food so for that reason you start losing weight Okay. Now, uh, there are times that we hear either somebody has high blood pressure. Do we even have low blood pressure? Are you talking about blood pressure oh. or that sugar? <laughs> 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 the, the, the levels. Is there times that either you have high levels of sugar and low levels of sugar? Oh, yeah, sure. It's possible. It's possible to have high levels of sugar, and that is what we call diabetes mm -hmm. because of the reasons that we explained. And at the same time, it's possible to have low blood sugar. But in, uh, for, in the case of low blood sugar, there must be something that is contributing to that. For instance, if you're taking some diabetes medication that lower the blood sugar so dramat uh, uh, drastically that your blood sugar is low. And let me be just uh, literal, just literally. Is the issue of diabetes... A serious issue in the society today oh yeah uh, diabetes is a very very serious issue in fact in some cases it has been termed as an epidemic uh, because uh, so many people right now they used to say it's in America and the first world countries but now even in Kenya so many people are becoming diabetics uh, and that is because of the lifestyle change uh, if we focus on America you understand that we rarely walk, you know, you, you all the time you're driving, uh, we rarely walk around and, you know, even exercising, which we try to do it. Sometimes it's hard to do. And, you know, the type of food that we eat has changed so much processed food, food high in calories. And for that reason, uh, living a very sedentary lifestyle, that is uh, where you don't, you're not active. Exactly. Not even exercise. You're not active at all. Coupled with eating uh, food, which we can call junk food, <laughs> that can that has led to serious case of diabetes. It's very very serious, and that's why here at RX Assist Pharmacy we are addressing it and 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 hitting it head head on. We are doing the head on collision to make sure that we assist people. Uh, thank you so much, Dactari. Um, apart from ultimate death. What are some of the other things that somebody who has diabetes can get affected with? Wow. So now we are talking about the complications of diabetes. Uh -huh. uh, this is a very interesting area. Uh, I want to try and look for words which are very, very uh, basic. But uh, complication of diabetes can be categorized in different, uh, uh, different forms. Sugar, when, the sugar or the, when there is high sugar concentration in the in the blood 
uh, it can affect the small blood vessels and if high blood sugar of course because sugar can crystallize if it affects the small blood vessels then that can affect your eyes because your eyes have small blood vessels meaning that it will it will affect your sight your sight there are small blood vessels in the kidney meaning that it can affect your kidney and that's why most of the diabetic people end up if it's uncontrolled for sure they can end up in dialysis their kidney failure or renal failure it can affect your brain because the brain has small vessels it can even affect so many other issues in i mean so many other areas of your life it can affect uh, uh, uh actually sexuality too uh, so it's it's a serious issue and when you mention such things that's when people's antennae go up to know that diabetes can affect all that those areas and not only that somebody who has uncontrolled diabetes is more prone to infections and sensation for instance of the feet becomes uh, not that good so a person who has chronic diabetes can be hurt can step on a nail and they will not know and that's what leads to infection you know the blood has a lot of sugar very good thriving atmosphere for bacteria and so it's not wonder that diabetics even uncontrolled also it can lead to amputation so there is all kind of problems thank you the far that we have gone uh, Dr. Kefa Wainaina has just mentioned about uh, the issues of diabetes and here at RX Assist Pharmacy they have uh, interventions so can you please give us a picture of uh, the interventions and what maybe somebody can do and in the process tell us of what you do here at RX Assist well thank you so much okay uh, to intervene when it comes to diabetes there can be various uh, 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 methods mm -hmm. uh, there, there is uh, when somebody is not is pre diabetic pre diabetic that is before you really become full blown diabetic you can do lifestyle modification that is increase exercise and take care with diet you know and that is a whole other area so exercise and diet so that's called lifestyle modification and then for full-blown diabetes, diabetes patient, then there could be different types of interventions. Of course, medically, uh, the doctor can prescribe uh, diabetic pills. Uh, an example, there is a med medication called metformin that everybody knows, and there are so many medications in that area. I don't even want to go into that. But then there is insulin. Insulin is used, and insulin is used when uh, the measure of, uh, of, of diabetes is to a certain level. So there are guidelines that uh, the doctors or medical professions use to decide whether to start with the insulin, insulin <coughs> sorry, or whether to uh, start with the tablets. Mm -hmm. And um, for that matter, treatment of diabetes is very expensive, especially when it comes to insulin. And in, 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 in America, especially, if somebody is not insured, most of those people are the ones who don't comply because if for instance the regimen or the treatment involves the use of insulin insulin is very expensive uh, give you an example um, long-acting insulin um, called Bestagla or Lantus will cost not less than four hundred dollars four hundred dollars a packet that is if you don't have insurance and so most of the patients who are suffering from diabetes they don't even use one type of insulin you may be needing an insulin you we use insulin let me go back we use insulin to to mirror how the body produces insulin if somebody doesn't have uh, insulin in the body and you want to treat them with insulin the primary objective is to mirror how the body produces insulin you eat three times a day and you also eat, eat some snacks so we want insulin to cover all those areas so the doctor may decide to put you on short acting insulin and at the same time, they may want to put you on long-acting insulin to cover you for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. So if you consider that, that's very expensive. If a patient has no insurance and he needs two types of insulins, uh, you are talking of possibly using over $500 to $1,000 a month, depending on how much they use. So this brings us to what we do at RX Assist Pharmacy. What is our calling? 
uh, our calling in Rx Assist Pharmacy is to make medications available and accessible to patients who have no insurance. And uh, for that matter, one of the areas that we concentrate so much is in the area of diabetes, availing diabetic medications and so much so insulin. We have partnered with pharmaceutical company, companies and especially with us, we partner with Eli Lilly to, produce, to provide insulin at no cost to patients who have no insurance. So what happens is the patient will go to the doctor and the doctor will prescribe uh, one or two types of insulin. If this patient has no insurance, then the doctors, we partner with the doctors, we talk to doctors. We actually have some even Kenyan uh, nurse practitioners and doctors who help us. We partner with them, they'll send those patients to us, we will do eligibility. And if somebody doesn't have insurance and is within a certain income bracket, vis-a-vis uh, -vis the number of people in the household, they qualify. And when they qualify, then we do not sell insulin to them. We give them insulin for free, but they will pay some admin cost because, of course, we have to keep our lights, our, our, our lights on <laughs> and we have to keep the pharmacist and other employees working. But it's not comparable to even uh, purchasing insulin with, with discount cards. No, you're not getting, you're not paying for the insulin. You're not paying for other diabetic medications which qualify in our formulary. Once you qualify, we provide you that medica those medications at a, a, an admin fee or admin cost. Exactly. And thank you so much. Uh, people would wish to know exactly where we are located. Well, we are located, we are in North, is it North, North Houston, right? Uh, I would give the address. We are at 17020, 17020 Beaver Springs Drive, Houston, Texas. And our zip code is 77090. We are in suite number eight. And to make it very easy, if we are, um, if you exit on FM 1960 along F, uh, along uh, I-45, FM 1960 along uh, I-45 south, then we are eight traffic lights along FM 1960. I don't know how else to explain. Thank you so much. <laughs> Behind the water bugger. <laughs> 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 now, uh, somebody would be asking, uh, there are these, um, and maybe next time you'll show us, you know, that, uh, about the tests, the different tests that maybe people do, yes. or, and especially those who are at home, yeah. uh, they would wish to know, you know, those tests that they do, exactly. and the processes that they need to follow. And now that we have care marks there, then I know we are going to do a lot in terms of uh, teaching people on how to manage diabetes. Oh, sure. Uh, I welcome that. I will be more than happy and willing to demonstrate how to use the testing kits, even demonstrate how to use insulin pens. We, we have top of the line, actually, uh, insulin. Uh, you know, we, 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 we're not providing cheap insulin because it's free. Actually, we are offering the best. Yeah, so I'll be more than happy to explain that. I will also show you how we can benefit your people in Kenya. Kiamax and Rx Assist Pharmacy, we strive to make sure that we can reach as many people as possible. If you have your loved one here in America, we can take care of them. If they travel back home, we can follow them up with the same treatment. As a matter of fact, I was talking to a, a, a nurse practitioner today who would be willing to, to see the patients on, on Kiamax platform so that they can continue the same, same treatment they have been getting here in America. And the beauty of, the, uh, of this is, if you're here in America and you have a, a parent who is suffering, especially from diabetes, because it affects so much old, older people, we can be able to follow up together. You can see the history, you can see what they are using and, 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 and the medical history, and you can follow up everything from here. You can even pay the bills from here so that you don't have to worry about sending money to somebody who takes a cut before taking your parents or your friends to the hospital. Thank you.